Should men receive paternal leave with the same pay and duration as women receive with maternal leave, why or why not? In Sweden you get 390 days of paid leave per kid, based on income up to a limit, that can be divided however you want want provided each parent use at minimum 90 days the first two years. Then there are 90 additional days you can use but at lower pay. You can only use 30 or so days each together, at the same time, however thought one parent can use vacation days when the other uses the parental leave if you want to be both home. In practice the mother usually uses slightly more of the days. Although I agree, the only distinction I would put for the sake of conversation is that in some parts, women actually get two different maternal leave, one is medical, you just pushed a human out, you need rest, and one is parental, okay now take care of that human. So if there's that distinction, should dad get both? Or just the parental part? Or can we get medical leave after conception since that's when our part was done? S. Good distinctions. Yeah, my wife got disability medical for a time and then maternity leave. They were considered separate for her job and by state laws. Agree with the distinction, but I'd even be for fathers being able to at least apply for some form of medical support leave if they were supporting a partner who was on bed rest or after a complicated delivery, leave that didn't count against other leave. I had a pretty easy late pregnancy and recovery, but my friends ended up both needing to use a big chunk of their flaw before the baby was even born, shortening the already paltry 12 weeks. The dad had to go back to work before the mom was even technically supposed to lift objects as heavy as their baby. I agree 100%. Both should get equal parental leave to look after the new human but they should also get appropriate time to look after the mother before or after birth. In that case I could definitely see the mother getting more time than the father to cover that gap between mother not able to work and mother in need of more assistance than can be provided by a partner with a job. Yes, of course they ducking should. Children need both of their parents during this formative time. It also helps against male-female discrimination during job candidate selection. If you want to be humane and not just give the bare minimum to the party that medically requires it, yes there should be both. I just read a post on legal advice where a college admin was telling a 38-week pregnant woman that she could allow a one-week absence in the event of a natural birth and two weeks of a C-section. I wasn't even cleared to drive at two weeks with mine. Plus you are still basically bleeding out the baby's house at two weeks. People are ducking animals man. Don't mind sharing. I had a look. My wife was a mess down there after three weeks. Barely healed at all. Pisses me off no end to think anyone could be required to go back this early. It's crazy that the threat is on father's rights when this is still happening to women. Both cases are well deserved. Like I can't even imagine being able to the full flint time of 12 weeks even though I have the financial ability to do so. I'm afraid I would be shamed with my company. Women in other countries get a year. In the EU the lowest it's 3 months and the longest 2 years. Also mandatory 45 days after birth everywhere in the EU. Edit, mandatory maternity leave varies by country as it can be seen on page 5 here, https, ec.europa.eu sociable observable. Dossed 16677 Langen and sorry for the initial wrong information. It's indeed 45 days at the highest only. However maternity leave it's offered everywhere at varying lengths as it can be seen from the same document. How do companies deal with multiple pregnancies? My grandma had 7 kids rapid fire and that'd be like 14 years of maternity leave if it was the EU max. I can't imagine paying someone for 14 years and they didn't work that time at all. I think that people take it realistically. If one wants to have such a large family so quickly, one would probably not also be a career woman, which is fine and 100% an okay way to live. I'm not sure on the specifics here, but I do know that Sweden's system at least is not paid out by the company, but by the government, so individual companies are not taking on the burden of a very fruitful employee. In France it's paid by the government as well just like sick leaves. That way a company can't discriminate against someone who has to have time off for medical reasons or be guilt-tripped for receiving unearned money. That's why we pay taxes. That's the way it should be. Here in the US the companies pay it all, even the sick leave, so everyone is afraid to actually use it unless they are very sure their bosses aren't the types to hold it against them. Most states don't have any form of paid sick leave for a lot of workers in places like food service, where you really want sick people to stay away from the food. Yes, 
although I would also go for women getting a bit of pregnancy leave on top of it if so required. This is the way it's done in Canada. The mother gets 17 weeks of maternal leave, and then there's a further 35 weeks of parental leave that can be taken by the mother or the father or both. Even both simultaneously. Yeah, I like the way it's done in Canada. The parents can choose how they want to split it. Yep. My wife was really upset I had to go back to work and she was stuck with the baby by herself for a few more months. That's probably a huge contributor to postpartum depression issues, too. I actually wonder if they've done any studies on it or just swept it under the rug like we've historically done with things like PPD and miscarriages. Yep, Sweden showed a decrease in the rate of PIPA when they started allowing the non-birthing partners to also take leave, so both parents on one day. Like, so mom could go to the doctor if she needed it, or if she was having a really rough day with the baby, vaccine day, etc. Without seeing the study, that makes a lot of sense. Historically, it seems like the tribe always helped in raising the kids. Being stuck at home raising a child, even though it's a wonderful gift, can be mentally and physically exhausting. Of course, and it seems like most of the comments here agree. For anybody who doesn't, understand that paternity leave actually benefits the mom as much, or more, than the dad. Sure, the dad gets to see his kid more, but the mom gets more, much needed, time to rest. Not only that, in countries with paid paternity leave, women's salaries tended to rise. My company actually provides like 12 weeks of paternal leave. And it's in the US which is the most surprising part. Mine too. General Mills, based in Minnesota. One of my co-workers got back from his leave a few months ago and he did not have the standard tired new parent look and he is so happy about their new baby. It's wonderful to see. As someone who lives near MN and is debating switching fields, that's great to know. My current job allows five days. It's a slap in the face of any man who becomes a dad. General Mills is a great place to work for. The good people stay because they're treated well. I am a contractor and am hopefully getting converted to in November, but I regularly work with people who have been with the company 20 to 30 years. I hope that this can be the company that I find my future in, tired of job hopping in my early 30s. Yes. Needing to give women maternity leave but not men parental leave is a straightforward incentive to hire men over similarly qualified women. It hurts everyone involved. Need men from being involved as dads, and hinders the careers of women. Where I am from, they can. Either parent can take leave and earn 55% of their income for a year, or it can be split between both parents. Where is this? Canada is like this. The woman has to take a certain amount of it though on account of her body needing to heal and it is bad for her health to go back to work right away. Yes. My state has it for state, government, and I believe some private sector workers. What state is this? Delaware. That's really awesome. I looked for articles and found where 12 weeks paid leave is mandated for state employees only. Was there a subsequent determination on private employers? Canada has this. Either parent can take parental leave. Canada has two kinds of leave. Women who have given birth get 15 weeks, which cannot be shared with the father. Then the standard parental leave is 40 weeks to be split between the two parents, but each parent can only take maximum 35 weeks. So in theory you could have mom take 50 weeks, her 15 plus 35, and dad take 5, or you could have mom take 20 weeks and dad take 35, or anything in between. We also have extended leave where it's the same amount of money but it's spread out over 69 weeks, where one parent can only take up to 61 weeks. Also, parents who have just adopted a child are also entitled to the parental leave but the 15 weeks is only for women who have delivered a baby. They essentially do in Canada. You receive 17 weeks of maternity leave, which is to be taken by the mother, and then 35 weeks of parental leave. You can take time off concurrently with your partner, 17.5 weeks each at 55% pay of your annual salary, or split your parental leave with your partner so that one takes 17.5 weeks off, followed by the other parent taking 17.5 weeks off. The rules just changed a year ago that you can now take 18 months off with payments from the government being equal to 33% of your annual income. There are also separate rules for adoption, but same idea that you receive 52 weeks of paid leave to care for your new baby. 
my employer actually topped up my maternity parental leave pay so for 52 weeks I received 85% of my regular pay. You get 35 weeks for adoption. Same with surrogacy, a friend of mine used a surrogate and the surrogate got the 17 weeks of maternity leave because she gave birth and my friend and his wife got 35 weeks to split however they wanted. 